walk into the skyscraper occupying the lot between 6th Avenue and Church Street in Manhattan's Tribeca, and you may be shocked by what you see. The lobby of this relatively unassuming building, still known as the AT&T Long Distance Building, is a masterpiece of Art Deco interior design, containing a breathtaking series of murals by one of the most talented, prolific, and versatile artists of the mid to 20th century, Hildreth Meir. Don't be surprised if you don't know her name. Despite an extensive and impressive body of work spanning 40 years, Mier has not been well recognized, even among art and architectural historians. Although her name may not be well known, Mier's work is in plain sight throughout New York City. The most visible examples are the colossal circular sculptures representing song, drama, and dance on the 50th Street facade of Radio City Music Hall, the mosaics at St. Bartholomew's Church on Park Avenue and Temple Emmanuel on 5th Avenue at 65th Street, and the marble inlay for the altar in St. Patrick's Cathedral's Lady Chapel. Mier also frequently collaborated with the illustrious New York architectural firm of Voorhees, Gamelin & Walker, working closely with the noted architect Ralph Walker, the firm's principal design partner. Walker designed many of the city's most elegant and innovative Art Deco skyscrapers and garnered a reputation as a specialist in the design of buildings for the communication industry. But Mier's first commission with the firm was for the spectacular Red Banking Hall in the old Irving Trust Company building at 1 Wall Street. It was Mier's very next project with the firm that brought her into the lobby of the AT&T Long Distance Building. The building at 32 Avenue of the Americas was an extensive renovation and expansion of a pre-existing structure, the Walker Lispinard Building, originally completed in 1914 with seven more stories added a few years later. Voorhees Gamelin and Walker was commissioned to enlarge and reface the building in 1929. Walker converted it to a stepped back Art Deco tower clad in multicolored rough textured bricks. The AT&T Long Distance Building was the world's largest long distance center a communications crossroads for long-distance telephone calls in the northeastern United States. In addition, all telephone calls between North America and overseas locations terminated at the building. Her theme for the lobby reflected the building's literal function as a hub of international communications. If you look at the south wall of the vestibule at the building's 6th Avenue entrance, you will see a large rectangular map of the world she entitled Telephone Wires and Radio Unite to Make Neighbors of Nations. The map is fabricated from the same type of ceramic tiles that cover the lobby walls, only in a broader range of colors. The metal bands stretching horizontally across the tiled surface are meant to resemble the undersea cables laid by ships, like the one bobbing in the Atlantic between the United States and Europe. Now pass from the vestibule into the main lobby and look up to the ceiling, where you will see another mural designed by Mier. This is not what she originally proposed. Mier's initial theme for the ceiling was called A Day in the Life of a Telephone Girl. Telephone service expanded rapidly in the early decades of the 20th century, bringing more and more women into work as telephone operators, one of just a few professions open to them. As such, telephone girls came to be popular cultural icons of the time, symbols of modernity, of both economic and social change. Mier thought a mural centered around the so-called new woman would be more contemporary, modern, and interesting than one filled with monumental allegorical figures. Her proposed design showed a young woman waking up, enjoying her morning coffee, getting dressed, and leaving for her job in the AT&T Long Distance Building. The AT&T executives, all men of course, were not so enamored with the concept. They wanted a more conventional approach, allegorical figures and all. Mir was not only an artist, but an astute businesswoman, and she understood the importance of pleasing her clients, regardless of her own preferences. She went back to the drawing board and came up with an alternative approach, the continents linked by the telephone and wireless. Look closer and you'll see two classically inspired female messengers at the center of the ceiling. An eagle hovers above one, a condor over the other. They hold gold lines representing telephone and telegraph wires that extend diagonally to regal personifications of four continents at the periphery of the ceiling symbolizing the ability of the telephone to unite the far-flung corners of the globe. To your right is Africa holding a fan. 
She is accompanied by two exotic lions and reclines against a backdrop of the Egyptian pyramids. To your left is Europe, who holds a scepter and an orb and leans against a classical column with a scroll-like top of an Ionic capital. A Roman aqueduct, the Dome of St. Peter's Basilica, and the Towers of Notre Dame can be seen in the background. Proceed through the lobby, and on your right, just beyond Africa, you'll encounter Asia, wearing a kimono and flanked by a tiger and an elephant. And to the left is Australia, readily identifiable by the kangaroo next to her. She holds a sheaf of wheat and rests her arm on the back of a sheep. The mural is executed in warm shades of orange, gold, and brown predominantly. The AT&T building mural gave Mier an opportunity to experiment with a new medium for her called Silhouette Mosaic, a technique using glass tiles called tesserae to form the outlines and details of the design. The spaces in between are filled with colored cement. Silhouette Mosaic was more economical than solid mosaic, an important consideration in the Great Depression. A colorful border of multicolored glass mosaic tiles connects Mier's continents. She continued this mosaic decoration on the upper portions of the walls of the lobby corridor leading to the building's secondary entrance on Church Street. The linear abstract patterns suggest the long-distance telephone lines and crisscrossed wires of the building's switchboards. In 1991, the Landmarks Commission added the long-distance building lobby containing Mier's murals to its registry of protected spaces, recognizing the historic and aesthetic significance of the interior space as a precious New York City landmark.